Welcome to the Garden State Baseball Podcast. Everything you need to know about amateur baseball in New Jersey. Here are your hosts, Steve DeTrolio and TJ Hunt. All right, baseball fans, welcome back. Um, it's been a long time coming, but here we are. Uh, finally here for the start of our the, the 2021 high school baseball season after you know, what we all know last year was kind of a wash with, with everything that happened with COVID-19. So here we are talking high school baseball in New Jersey with the Garden State Baseball Podcast. Um, I'm TJ Hunt from PBR New Jersey. Alongside me is Steve Vitrolio from Diamond Nation. Um, and honestly, Steve, I'm just really excited to, to get out and see some ball games. you know, in the high school season. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, obviously, last year was very disappointing. You know, we were stuck inside this time last year. Talking about baseball, looking forward to baseball, and it never came. So uh, here we go. Let's cross our fingers. We got less than 24 hours to go for tomorrow's opening day, high school baseball in New Jersey. And uh, really looking forward to, you know, obviously getting out, watching some games and seeing the scores posted and the tweets coming. And, you know, it's, it's a long time coming. So I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. And, and just looking ahead right now into the season, you know, I, I wrote down some notes here with some top storylines that we have. And I think, you know, just based off of what happened, you know, in the summertime last year and even in the fall leading up to the off season, number one storyline for me, Chase Petty. Like, how, how high will his, you know, triple digit fastball go in the draft? You know, how many scouts are going to be at every game watching everything he does? Um, he's dynamic. Would you say so? Oh, he's electric. He's electric. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. It's, you know, it's actually, you know, we're actually spoiled because, you know, we had, uh, you know, Anthony Volpe go a couple years ago in the first round. We may have another first rounder coming out of New Jersey again. So we're actually getting spoiled, but it's, it's, at, you know, it's, you know, we got to soak it all in while we, while, you know, while this stuff happens. So, um, but I'm really looking forward to see how he kind of goes through, how he carries mainland and see if that helps mainland really make a run this year. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it will, but, uh, I'm sure there's going to be some contingency plans in for him and pitch count limits and stuff like that. But I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how I can go. And then the second bullet point I have down here is Don Bosco and St. Joe's. Just the overall talent that they have, um, you know, in, in the north end of the state. Uh, top to bottom, pitching staff, lineup wise, Division One commits um, all over the place, littered. I think right now in terms of just – um, experience and, um, you know, just like senior leadership with the upperclassmen. I think the, the nod goes to St. Joe's in the beginning part of the season. But, you know, with Don Bosco, with those junior pitchers at the helm, um, you know, with their lineup littered, again, like I said, with, with 22s um, and, and 23s, um, you know, top to bottom, they're going to be a tough out for sure. Yeah, you mentioned the leadership factor. It is going to be interesting this year with, you know, coming off, you know, a very minimal season with the last dance and how these teams respond and who carries the weight. And, you know, usually you have that next crop that's being developed as leaders. They step into the, the role and you don't miss a beat. But now, you know, everyone's kind of in uncharted waters here. And whoever can kind of get their guys up and playing first and, and, and get that leadership stuff taken care of and off and rolling, I think the – you know, that's going to be a huge advantage. But, you know, obviously Bosco's loaded. Um, you know, Dana, Poli, you know, they, they, got, they got a ton of guys at the top of the rotation. Um, so it's going to be interesting, interesting to see, um, you know, how that folds out, you know, in the parochial A uh, up north. And then the third bullet point I have here is just coming off, like I said before, um, with, with last summer, is the last dance tournament. And we touched a little bit on it um, last June, I think right before it started. Um, in one of the podcasts, but it ended up being a huge hit, you know, and, and hats off to all the organizers that, you know, put it together. And it, it was a big task and they, it, they made it happen. So, um, but in regards to that, I think Cranford coming into the season after absolutely running through that tournament um, and in the championship, like rolling over again, like the, the talented Don Bosco team, um, I think them riding high after the last dance is, is certainly something to watch uh, this spring to start off. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, the rest of the state and all the other groups really got to experience what us in the, uh, in the group three experience every year is, you know, they're tough out and they come to play and Coach McCaffrey's always got his guys ready to roll. And, 
you know, they're, they're deep. They're, they're deep one through nine. And, you know, they don't have the star power all the time, but they play baseball and they know how to win. So, and that's really at the end of the day and in June, that's what, that's what matters the most, you know, not how many commits you have, not how many, you know, who's in the top 10 of the rankings, like how many baseball players you have, who can execute and who knows how to win baseball games. And Cranford definitely knows how to do that. Um, so I know they're going to, you know, give everyone a tough run. And, you know, right now, obviously they're clear, clear on favor to win the group three. Uh, everything holds true. Um, looking forward to kind of seeing how that group three plays out because you do have Milburn, um, who's always tough, and you know they have a couple decent decent arms that can maybe knock off somebody. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll find out. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and just moving on with with some top players to watch again. I mentioned Petty already. Um, the the other three guys are are numbers two, three, and four in in the twenty one PBR rankings. We have um, Anthony Solomato from Bishop Eustis. We have uh, Pierce Coppola from. Um, from Verona, and we have Shane Panzini from Red Bank Catholic. Those top four arms, um, you know, I said it on one of the podcasts I was doing with with Shooter and Nathan Rohde, uh, those are some of the top guys coming out of New Jersey, um, just in terms of, you know, velocity, pitchability, et cetera, that, you know, we've seen in a very long time. Um, so the top four guys right there are guys that certainly could go early on in, in July's draft, but – um, certainly guys to keep an eye on and I'm sure scouts will be looking at them too. Yeah, sure. And you, know, you mentioned those four, you know, Pierce Cabola just seems to keep getting better and better and better. I remember, you know, I think two years ago, the Garden State games, he was kind of the newcomer. And now, you know, two years later with that high school baseball, you know, you, you kind of see where these, these jumps have been made and, you know, he's definitely put himself in position to potentially get popped in June. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch. I think there's some other guys you mentioned, Sean Hard, depending on you know how he he comes along this this spring, could potentially see some action in June in the draft. Um, so it, it'll be it'll be fun to watch. It'll be fun to, to we, we're really deep heavy in pitching New Jersey this year. Um, I think we were talking about your top ten. I think it was eight or nine pitchers in the top ten, um, you know, in your rankings. So it's uh, I think it's going to be uh, you know bats are it's going to be tough to uh, hit probably New Jersey this spring, but you know we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I think not only those four that are obviously high on the radar gun, high high octane fastballs in the senior class. Um, there's also a big time junior who, who I just saw last week was up to 97. Big Nas Mule um, out of Passaic County Tech. He is an absolute um, you know electric factory when you go and watch him play, especially when he pitches. And and even when he doesn't pitch, he's he's um, affecting the game somehow. He plays shortstop, he bats third, second or third. Um, you know, and, and he's equally as good at the plate too. I think he'll stay on the bump in college, in my opinion. But um, you know, he was really awesome uh, last week when I saw him live, up ninety four, ninety six, such a ninety seven. Yeah, sure. I, I got a chance to see him a couple times this past summer. Um, we actually played him. He didn't pitch, so fortunate for us that he did not throw. But he did play shortstop, and you know, he's 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 just an athlete. You know, he's a big, strong, physical kid. Um, it looks like he still has more room to, to fill out and really, you know, to, to, to hit, to hit a high ceiling there. So, um, you know, he's going to be fun to watch and I'm sure he's going to carry, carry Passaic Tech, um, and probably knock off some, some, you know, somebody in, you know, the County, if they do, if they are doing the County tournament, um, or even the state tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like we said, the, the, the dark horses to watch, I think for the draft, um, you said it's Sean Hart out of St. Joe's Montvale up to 95, big, big six, five frame, lank, lanky Boston college commit in the senior class. Another guy, Ari Samick um, from Teaneck high school in Bergen County. Um, Clemson commit third base, middle infielder type, um, just a power hitter, um, you know, and, and, and a pretty good athlete right there. A couple other guys, Jack Finley, Roxbury, Notre Dame commit left-hander up to 91 pitchability there. Um, you know, and, and even Mike Bello up at St. or I'm uh, sorry, Pope John, um, way up there in Sussex County, um, could be a guy that we see get picked an Auburn commit. So, um, the senior class talented group. Um, I think the, the, the arms kind of reign true, um, ahead of the bats in, especially in this year's draft, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to be really exciting to see how it all turns out. Sure. Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be exciting. And, you know, you mentioned the arms over the bats. You know, I think, you know, just coming out of coming out of Jersey the last few years, you know, obviously, I think we've been we've been arm heavy. Um, 
you know, just, just, just looking at your guys' rankings, you know, PBR rankings, you know, it seems to be, you know, 75% pitchers in the top 10, um, which is not surprising. Um, but then, you know, the bottom, you know, the mid 10 to 20, 20 to 30, there are some really, really good position players that are mixed in that are all, all really, really good and probably going to be really good college baseball players. Or who knows, someone may jump into that top 10, you know, with a really good spring this year and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, you know, obviously with the draft, you know, I think, I think it's going to be 20 rounds. Is that, is that what we heard? Yeah, I think that's, it's going to be 20 rounds. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, that may limit some guys going later in, in the draft, but um, you know, certainly there's, there's a lot of talent in that, in that 21 class, a lot of really good baseball players. Um, so it's going to be, uh, like I said, it's going to be a fun season. And now with, with everything that's been happening, you know, division one schools haven't been able to go out recruiting. Um, just kind of changing the topic here, but uh, it was just released, I think, last week that um, Division One schools will be able to start to go out to recruit finally in all sports starting June 1st. Um, so very exciting time. Um, you know, hopefully they, they can get out and see some state tournament games, county tournament games, kind of get their feet wet, and then heading into tournaments at, at Diamond Nation, um, you know, they'll hopefully get back to normal as, as much as we can. So that's exciting, too. Sure. Yeah. There was two, two, um, two things came out of the NCAA this past week. One was the, like you mentioned, June 1st, it'll be in-person recruiting for the first time uh, since what 19 fall, I think it was. Yeah. And um, the one time free transfer in college baseball. So those two things will have a huge impact, um, you know, positive and negatively, maybe on high school baseball players, uh, positively meaning that obviously they can be seen in person. And I think that's going to be huge. Um, navigating this process uh, the other way with no in-person recruiting was extremely difficult. Um, and I think it, it's, you know, who knows, everyone's doing, doing their own thing and, and kind of handling it differently. Um, and, you know, recruiting off video or, or trying to see guys, or I know some college coaches were hopping on travel teams. You know, we had one that was working with us just to get out and, and, you know, probably get, you know, coach and obviously see some players. So, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things going on there, but I do think uh, the, obviously getting out is going to, you know, hopefully get us back to some sense of normalcy in this recruiting period. Uh, the one-time free transfer will be interesting. I know, you know, talking to a lot of college coaches, the, the portal just keeps blowing up. One with obviously COVID and, and the expanded rosters and guys able to transfer because they have the extra year now and they graduated. Now they're going on to some other other places. Uh, but moving forward, it's going to be interesting because now you, know, you may have you can fill a need quickly by getting a transfer to come in and you may not have to recruit that position out of the high school player, um, mm -hmm. potentially, um, you know, and then obviously you have the JUCOs is another, another avenue for college coaches, you know, four year guys to go out and, and, and grab players from. And the four, uh, the two year guys in junior college right now are coming off uh, another season with no eligibility burn. So they're coming in um, having four years of eligibility, you know, which, which is huge. Um, so there's a lot of factors. I mean, high school baseball recruiting, I think it's going to be a little bit different than what we normally, you know, we, what, like we were used to, um, uh, the last three or four years. Uh, I, I still think, you know, the better players are definitely going to get recruited. So I always tell my guys and anyone else that asks, I just, just get really, really good and keep, keep, keep at it. And, you know, and hopefully, uh, you know, you'll find somewhere to go. Yeah. I think, um, with, I think the whole idea with this, um, the one-time transfer, being okay was to alleviate some of the log jams, right, on rosters. Like, we, I was just watching Mississippi State play. They got a bunch of guys in their roster. Vanderbilt has a bunch of guys. All the, all the top schools have a bunch of guys on their rosters. Um, so I think the whole deal was like, all right, let's, let's see if we can even this out, slowly get back to, you know, the equilibrium of the roster. Um, but in turn, how, what's the trickle down? How's that going to affect guys trying to find schools in the 22 class, 23 class, and so on? So – um, I think, yeah, like you said, it's, it's a good thing. It's, and it, it could be, you know, an iffy thing, um, depending on what happens with recruiting. Sure. Yeah. There, there's going to, there's going to be, to your point, you know, a lot of it is COVID related. Um, the rosters right now, I believe are unlimited, um, per school. Everyone's kind of managing a little bit differently. I think next year in, tw in 2022, right? 2022, mm -hmm. um, it's going to go down to 40. So the max on the, on the college roster is going to be 40. And then the next year it's going to be 37. Then it's going to go down to 35. So there's a few years here that we're still kind of have to navigate heavier rosters. But as we start kind of going down um, a few each year, those players may get misplaced. Now they're going to be in the transfer portal looking to go somewhere. And like you said, you mentioned the word trickle down. 
you know, it may just go from, you know, power five to mid-major, mid-major down to, um, you know, division two and three. And, you know, the high school player may kind of be looking in, in you know, being in a tough spot, depending on, um, you know, how, how, how many schools are going to the transfer portal to get guys, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously I think, you know, some schools won't go to transfer routes because maybe from academic reasons, but, you know, there, there is going to be a lot of, a lot of new things I think we're all going to experience the next couple of years managing this, uh, this process. Yeah, it was definitely something that needed to happen. You know, um, I think it, it had been talked about for years and years and years since it even first was integrated. Um, but, but like, you know, like I said before, it's going to be interesting to see the trickle down. Um, so with that being said, um, what else are you excited about this spring? Anything that we didn't touch on so far? No, I, I think, uh, again, I'm just excited to see some baseball. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hopefully get out to a couple games tomorrow. Um, and just really just looking forward to some big matchups this week. I think, you know, there's a lot of really good games, uh, you know, the rest of this week, you know, Milburn's at Seton Hall Prep, Mainland's at Holy Spirit, Jackson Memorial's at St. Augs, uh, Red Bank Catholic later in the week is at Middletown South, uh, Bosco Holy Spirit. I know you had mentioned a couple. Um, all really good matchups, and I, I think we're all looking forward to just seeing some really good baseball being played and that energy in the dugout and, you know, really that 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 one piece that, you know, is, is missing when, you know, you're looking to see a really good baseball game, just to, the atmosphere more than anything. So, um, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to anyway. I'm, I'm looking looking forward to seeing all those things and, and, and really following along for the next couple of months. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, I'm excited to, to get out there and, and get going. I think tomorrow I'm going to head out and see Big Pierce um, throw for the first time. Um, they're playing against Caldwell. So I'll get to see the big lefty, um, get a good report on him, and then, you know, we'll see how the, the rest of the week ends up with in terms of weather. But it looks like it's going to be, you know, a pretty good week, a bunch of 70-degree days. So good week to start high school baseball. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, obviously as we get through the rest of this spring, you know, we're going to be looking to obviously follow some games and, and, and any, any questions or anything that you guys have, please, you know, DM us uh, if you have any questions or, you know, whatever that we're going over college recruiting, or you, you met, you have a big matchup that we missed. You know, shoot, shoot us some DMs, right? We want, we want some feedback from you guys this, this spring because you know, obviously us talking, um, we want to, we want to make sure that we're given all the information that you guys want. So, uh, feel free to hit us up. Absolutely. DMS are open emails, of course. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys out there. So, um, you know, for Steve Detrolio, this is TJ Hunt. This is the Garden State Baseball Podcast. We look forward to seeing this week's first week of baseball games and, you know, we'll follow up with you guys at this time next week. So until then, we'll see you guys out there. Good luck, fellas.